Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. And today we're gonna take a look at some other satellites. What I've done is I've actually changed this LNB. I'm using a circular polarized LNB. And uh, yeah, there's some DBS services out there like Dish Network that use that polarity. And uh, we're gonna take a look at uh, their satellite because sometimes, there it is there, sometimes, there's signals on there uh, that are not encrypted, that are free to air. Right now I'm picking up some pretty good transponders to the right, but I noticed if I tilt the dish a little bit the other way, we can get some other uh, transponders. Let me see, I'm turning the dish right now and yeah, look at that. So it's gonna be interesting. We'll see what we can get. But first we're gonna do this one. Okay, we're going to go in and do a scan right now and see what we find. Okay, so we are going to do a scan right now of what we're picking up out there. Let's go there and start the scan. And here we go. <clears throat> now, Dish Network uses Nagra encryption, which is secure. So we're not going to see anything on the satellite if it's encrypted. However, there's always a chance there's some channels that they don't encrypt. And those are kind of hidden channels because nobody really looks. Okay, so those are their channels. And they number their channels. There's no names because they have their own uh, EPG. Okay, there's one there, 5191. That is not encrypted. So when this is done, we'll go back and look at that one. Just about done here. Oh, a few more. 92. And so we got the end, so it's Niagara encryption. Let's go back and look at that, uh, that one channel Okay, here we go. There it is there. 5191. We have some programming. Oh, it's on. Well, there you go, guys. That's actually a pretty good channel. Uh, and that's being received on a small KU band dish. And that's free. It's not encrypted. So... There's some worthwhile programming on there. That's why I like doing this. You never know what you're going to find. This is uh, not documented anywhere that this channel is in the clear. Uh, it is receivable on Dish Network Satellite with a free-to-air receiver. Okay, well, let's move the dish a little bit and see what else we pick up. I'm interested in those other transponders more to the right. That is another satellite, uh, again, Dish Network, but it's co-located and it's usually a, a, not... not a, you know, about uh, maybe two uh, tenths of a degree to one side. So, uh, uh oh, better shut this off before it gets too risque. Okay, guys, I just want to uh, point out the satellite I was just on was ANIC F3, 118 degrees uh, west, and it carries the Dish Network uh, direct to home broadcast. And as you see, they are all encrypted uh, with NAGRA. Interestingly enough, somebody reported that CNN was in the clear. And, of course, I didn't find it in the clear. But that was reported back in uh, 2001, October 2001. Uh, Linksa works on uh, what people report to them. So somebody back in 2001 did the exact same thing I did. They found CNN in the clear. 
they reported it. It got listed on here. And, um, you know, it probably brought it to Dish Network's attention and they went in and encrypted it. But, hey, we found the channel. There's always some channels. Sometimes they may not notice these channels. The encryption isn't working. And you can pick them up free to air. But you see that ION channel, wherever it is, is not uh, listed on here as being in the clear. So it is, uh, yeah, it is a bonus channel right now you can pick it up yep i don't see it anywhere on here so there you go guys and what i'm going to do next is i'm going to get an old dish network receiver out that hasn't been used since uh, 2017 and let's see what it can pick up without a subscription okay guys stand by hey guys i thought i'd play around uh with this old dish network receiver uh it's a vip 222k uh it does have it was subscribed. It does have an access card, a G4 access card in it. I've hooked it up to a Dish Network antenna, and it's on their satellite right now. Even though the Spectrum Analyzer isn't showing anything, it is a dual input. So the Spectrum Analyzer is on, on a splitter on one of them. So it's probably using the other tuner to do... It's actually doing something. It is doing a software update. This receiver has not been used since 2017. So um, let's see what it does. It's doing something. Maybe we'll be able to pick something up. It's not subscribed, but you never know what these things possibly could do. We'll see. Let's uh, let's see what happens. Okay. Okay, now your receiver's memory is now being programmed. Do not disturb or unplug your receiver. Okay. Okay, it's finally done that. Now it says it's starting up. Let's see what happens. Okay, so it's finally done and we're getting this screen. Seems like a screensaver. And I'm going to get the remote. Hold on a sec. I just put some fresh batteries in it. We'll see what happens. Oh, no, another test. <laughs> okay, well, this, this usually takes a while. It's actually going to, it's testing up to five different satellites that uh, DISH has. So I'll let it do that test, and we'll be back. We'll be right back in probably 10 minutes. Well, now it's uh, reporting a complete signal loss, which can't be true because it did a software update. So it's definitely picking up something. Anyways, I'll see what we find next. So what I'm running right now is a switch test and it takes a really long time, but we'll see what happens. So what I discovered was it was reporting tuner number one is not functional. Uh, that's the white cable there. Originally, I had that going through that splitter uh, so we could look at it on the spectrum analyzer. And what I realized uh, is, okay, there's the test. And you see the tester number one is now working as well. It's a little bit behind because when I started the test, it was going through that splitter. They use a proprietary method of communicating from the receiver to the multi-switch. They have custom multi-switches. <clears throat> and um, that splitter was probably blocking that communication. So by removing it, suddenly it's working. So we'll let it complete this test all the way to 50. Um, it's been running now for about 15 minutes. It takes forever, this test but apparently it checks everything and when it's done, hopefully we'll have something working. And if you're wondering what type of multi-switch I'm using with this Dish Network receiver right now, it is one of these old, uh, I think they called it uh, a Switch 64. Um, yeah, it had six inputs and four outputs. That's why it's called a 64. I actually have two satellites connected right now. 
The two blacks is their 119 degree satellite and the two whites is their uh, 110 satellite and over here three and four is going up to the receiver and one is just the power coming into it. So there is also, and I've used these in the past too, uh, they were called Switch 21s. Um, it was a single tuner switch between two satellites. So in this system I actually added an additional satellite originally passing the output of this Switch 64 into two Switch 21s. And yeah, there was another satellite, I think, 61 degrees that I used to put into here. Anyways, we will go upstairs and we will see how the switch test works. Um, it should find two satellites and it should be good enough. Uh, those are their main satellites. It should be good enough for us to uh, get something. We'll see. Okay, switch test is done and we have satellites 72 and 119 verified so i'm gonna say done check switch comes up we don't really need to do that let's just get over see what we can pick up if anything oh no we got to do this again okay stand by <laughs> okay well we're getting somewhere now it's downloading the program guide, which takes 10 minutes. Anyways, I'll be right back. Okay guys, so like, it must have been over an hour I spent just setting this thing up and uh, very time consuming. It was doing firmware updates and then switch tests and all kinds of things. But we finally got it going here. And uh, yeah, so let's see. Can we actually, and well, of course, these are pay-per-views, so no. Um, what about this one? Cancel that. These are all, how about the pre-order channel? Oh, hot teens without panties. All day, well, that's perfect. Let's have them all day. Let's uh, see if we can acquire that one. Oh, we have to call. <laughs> I didn't think that was going to work. But uh, yeah, so we get a bunch of porno channels that we can't see because we're not subscribed. Uh, what else? Wow, there's a lot of them on here. <clears throat> Transformers, yeah, there is just a bunch of pay-per-view channels that we cannot see. So, okay. Let me just go through these, see if anything comes in. Currently unavailable. <clears throat> yeah, there's the hot teens. What was that? Attention. No longer available. Oh, what was that? Oh, yes. The showcase. And of course, we can't see it. Yeah, anyways. Yeah, okay. So I've seen enough. Let's move on and see what else we can do. Stand by. So all of a sudden, this popped up. And, uh... I realize what it is it's the beginning of this movie and they uh, they just allow you to see it quickly I don't want to show too much of it because it's probably copyrighted but uh, yeah it's just so uh, how they kind of rope you in and then they get you to buy it because it shuts off after I think three or four minutes so at least it's working we're picking up something <laughs>